Hello YouTube, it's Doss Grigger, and welcome to another Linux First Impressions. I have recently been asked if I could look at Robo Linux. Now I'll be honest, the first time I tried to look at Robo Linux, I couldn't get it to work. Had a few issues, and to use Robo Linux, at least boot with the KDE ISO, I had to use the new the unit bootman utility and with that I was able to get my USB stuck to work otherwise it did not want to see the distribution the second thing I ran into was that the firmware was not updated for wireless drivers and luckily I had on my hard drive backups of the proper firmware that are needed and was able to then go ahead and install that firmware reset the wireless and get internet working at least with the USB stick the second thing about Robo Linux or the third thing that I found was that I'm not sure if you can really install it on the machine without paying for it. I'm running this right now off of my USB stick and everything appears to be working and I can install and update and as you can see GUVC View is working. It wasn't uh, installed when I first started but it's all running off of the USB stick. If you go and click on RoboKitty Installer it talks a little bit about the installer but it also discusses about membership fees and that a minimum membership fee of two dollars and thirty seven US dollars is required to be able to download now I'm not sure if that means that I can't install this on my hard drive unless I pay this minimum fee or options all up to fifty three dollars and ten cents they explain why they ask for donations here and I won't get into it. If you go to the Robo Linux website, you can see what all is there. But one of the biggest things about Robo Linux is they've come up with an ability so that you can virtualize your Windows XP or Windows 7 desktop and run it within a Linux environment. In fact, if you go to their home page here, they discuss this and if you remember I recently did an article or a video on Linux Mint and therefore you can actually download the software for Robo Linux Stealth VM you can download that and actually run that within the Linux Mint environment now what that allows you to do is pretty much take if you're dual booting your system it, it would allow you to virtualize your Windows partition and throw it into your Linux machine and run it as a virtual machine inside of your Linux box. Now they say that, oh, well, let's see that by doing that, you're going to have no viruses. Um, you're, you're going to be able to fix a lot of things and it's a lot safer and more secure to do. Well, let me tell you right up front, just because you're running in a virtual environment, does not mean that your system in the virtual environment cannot get viruses. However, they would stay inside that system environment. You can still be plagued with malware. You can still be plagued with viruses. That stuff can still run inside of a VM. And if your VM has access to the world or to any other systems in your network they can still be infected from your virtual machine so don't think that if you do this you don't have to run virus software you don't have to run malware a virtual machine is just like a real machine inside of another machine and it can be dangerous that is the only thing and the only warning that I will give about this I think it's kind of a neat idea I don't have a Windows environment that I could utilize to test this and see how it would work. I can only talk to you about Robo Linux in general. As I've said, 
This is the KDE flavor of Robo Linux. I was able to run it from a USB stick, install software, update software, get the latest of everything. It is running off of Debian Wheezy. I was able to also to install Simple Screen Recorder by following the steps on the website for that, updating the certain packages, and then compiling it from scratch since there isn't a Debian Wheezy package that you can just install. However, there were some issues that I ran into when I first started up this uh, distribution. And if you're thinking that you're going to find a distro that, oh wow, this is just like Windows. For instance, you click on this, and boy, you almost could have fooled me there. It almost looks like I've got uh, Windows right there. In fact, the music, the sound, a lot of the sound effects are of a Windows boot up. I was thinking, whoa, where's that coming from? Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's trying to make you feel at home as best as possible, and I appreciate that most Windows users might probably want that familiarity. If you're looking for a replacement OS, I don't think Robo Linux is the right one for you. There are a lot of other Linux distributions, such as the one I just reviewed with Linux Mint Cinnamon and Linux Mint Mate and others that I think are just as easy to learn and if you're gonna get your feet wet with Linux I think you're better off going with one of those and then installing their Robo Linux Stealth VM software if you want to virtualize your Windows environment now I'm not completely naive to doing a virtual machine Windows environment I have in fact downloaded for instance Microsoft's Windows 8 virtual machine that they do offer that you're allowed to use for a certain amount of time and I do have a license for Windows 8 and I tried using it to see if that would meet my needs to allow me to get rid of some things that I use just for some gaming and what I found was there is a lot of software that just doesn't work right in a virtual machine it's not utilizing the native hardware that is on a machine. It's creating and using virtualized drivers to run this software. That's one of the reasons why a lot of times I use as a last resort VMware to be able to do any type of a distribution review because the way a system will run with native hardware can be completely different than a way a system will run in a virtual machine so if you're having difficulty in one you might want to try the other and vice versa because you will get different results you'll find that something may work perfect in a native environment but as soon as you put it in a VM you've got all kinds of weirdness now this particularly is set up so it should work in a virtual machine. In fact, they have instructions about setting Robo Linux up in a virtual machine to try it out. And therefore, I think you wouldn't have an issue with this one. But if you're looking for a Windows alternative that's so much like, or I'm sorry, if you're looking for a Linux alternative that is so much like Windows, <sighs> this may give you that appearance on the outside, but some of the things that I had to do were kind of advanced to get to work to get some things up and running and I'm not so sure the wikis are there nor am I sure that most users are going to feel comfortable injecting uh, command line interface firmware drivers into their kernel just so they can get their wireless working or other hardware working that you may have trouble with. In fact, I'm really quite surprised that wireless didn't work out of the box. It looked like it was ready only for a wired connection. But that's only my personal opinion. I, I do feel that they got some great ideas with Robo Linux and that you may want to try it out just to see how they've themed it in a Windows-esque style but yet still being Debian. But outside of that, I can't really recommend using it as a desktop. They do have some great ideas, and I do like the idea there of that Stealth VM. That looks like it could be handy for some of you out there that are looking for that option. 
but again I, I can't test it I just don't have the right setup to be able to do that so for those who asked if I would look at Robo Linux here it is I hope I've met your needs and and your desire for for maybe someone looking at it and checking it out and you know trying to figure out is this something I want to go to or not and otherwise if it's morning evening noon, or night whatever you're having I hope you enjoy it have a great one and we'll talk to you all later bye guys